Why, hello everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California, and yes, we are in the middle of November when I do my mid-month garden tour. Well, today I'm not going to do a regular garden tour. I'm not going to go through and show you everything growing because really not much has changed, but I am going to talk about what we're going to be doing and what we are doing. Let's kind of do more of a walkthrough and you'll be able to see and you can compare. And yes, this is unbelievable. I am still picking cucumbers. It's been cold in the 40s at night and they're still growing like mad. I'm very shocked over that. That's the plant I talked about. I didn't even know it came up. It came up from an old cucumber I threw in that tote. And it's growing strong, probably because the wall is warm. The peppers are doing good. I've been trimming back tomatoes, not really trying to keep them and save them, but to see what's going to make it for the winter. As we go in the winter, in the next month, I'm not going to be planting a whole lot because as you can see, and you'll see, we're just going to do a walkthrough. And I might even walk in the Gary's garden. This is not the time of the year to start trying to grow tomatoes or peppers. We're at the wrong time of the year to get those in the ground now. We can still grow greens, and a lot of you are out there planting brassicas or started them a month or so ago and getting them in the ground. Well, we don't have to do that. We have our collards and kales already growing, and you know how we do it. We let them grow. We just leave them. Some of them are five years old. So I don't have to run out and grow anymore. But of course, the Swiss chard will come up on its own. And the tomatoes, of course, that were already here are still thriving because they were already here. So this has been growing for a while. And look how beautiful. It is full of tomatoes and it's hugging the warmth of the wall. Look at that. More on this side back here. So that's why I'm not planting too many new things. I've been debating on pulling that out. That's all celery seed. But see what's happening now? The stalk has died out and the new celery from this stalk is already regrowing. And I'll leave it. I didn't plant it. It's a bucket. I've actually got other ideas that I'm doing with buckets. So I'm going to kind of analyze what I want to do, what I want to keep, what I want to plant when we get through the holiday season. Because once I know our winter is done, I'll be planting. And that's eggplant. Yes, eggplant. That's turmeric back here. And I want to see how that's going to go. And of course, the purple basil is growing really good with a tomato plant in there. And there's even stevia that's hugging all the plants and growing because that dies out in the winter. So what I'm doing is analyzing what I'm going to change. And I am going to be doing some changes. And what I'm going to keep. I actually think I like this wall garden the way it is, and I will be adding and doing different things as we get into, I don't want to use the word spring, after we're done with the holidays. Now, this I did set up. Easy peasy setup. Two chairs. I bought two different colors from Walmart. They were $10 each because I was going to paint them. Never got to paint them, but I did put a board there and put three totes, holes in the front, and look at this. I planted this yesterday. I don't really need the cover now. I just threw some covers on to protect my cabbage. I didn't even know if the cabbage was going to make it. Let me just sit this down. Because I left them in the container too long. They got too big. So we'll see. But so far, so good. Let me uncover this. And I put all my onions in here because this was a very special onion to me. This is a white onion that went to seed and when it went to seed it ended up growing baby onions like a walking onion true onions on the top I've never seen that before so I marked it yes I marked it which is very unusual for me gonna keep track of these four that came up really good and these were never grown from seed these were grown from the baby onions from the top of a white onion and then, of course, more here. So I'm going to put something else in here. I might put pots in here, and that will help hold moisture in there if I need it. It's hugging the wall. And I've got three totes on two chairs. You could go four if you had a good board. So this has worked out really good. Buckets. We're going to get into buckets as spring comes, and we're going to get into a few other things as well. I ordered something, and when it came, Gary said, What is that? And I told him what I was going to do with it. And he said, get me 10. 
Same thing in the front yard. I've got a lot to do. I'm moving my blueberries. The blueberries are going into a different type of container. They're off the ground. They have to be off the ground because I have rabbits that live here. So I've designated some of the plants for the rabbits. Not even going to really walk in there much because we really don't need to. I've got broccoli growing and I'll snap some broccoli off and bring some to Kitty because you know how she is with her broccoli. Want to get more broccoli going. But I am changing things up. I'm going to probably pull that tool down that's well over a year old. Might turn the totes around because Gary took the swimming pools. Change that and get this where it's like a horseshoe I walk in. Water it and service it and get out. I have plants. And that's what we're doing right now. We don't need, Gary and I, to plant up a big garden. For the two of us, we have more than enough food. So what we want to do now is think about what we want to plant this spring. I'm going to try to hold back from planting a lot of squash because I don't use it. As you can see, it still hangs around the garden. I'll come out, grab some, and I do have them stored in the house. And if I'm roasting something, roasting a chicken, I throw it in there. But we're really big on zucchini more than any other squash. So what we're trying to do is analyze what we want to do. That's really the best thing to do. And I think I'm going to change my main garden or the theme of it. Ginger, I should do a vlog on ginger. I can tell you the mistakes and tell you good things. So we're gonna work on ginger. This is some of the ginger I set here. This wasn't a mistake, but what I had done was a mistake. I left it in the house too long. And I'll discuss that into detail another time. We could talk 30 minutes on that. These are starting to go a little brown. Now though today, we're actually going to be in the 80s. We still drop at night down to 50 or a little lower. And these plants are tropical and they're not really big on it. They do have the wall that holds the heat from the sun in the morning. And it is warm enough to keep these plants going, but they are going to die back. So I'm going to be harvesting some of them. Some of them I can just reach in and take what I want, do a cutting and not worry about it because I have so much. There's a ton of it on this table. So I want to get another table set up or another area set up in the same exact direction because I have tried to grow ginger and turmeric before and I didn't have the success that I've had here. That's not really any different. It was something else I did different on the ones that are over there, the three there. So I want to get something else set up so I have an overabundance because you can't have too much ginger because you can freeze it. Of course, you can't grow it once you froze it. All right, let's walk into the main garden and see what's going on. I'm doing more cleaning. There are the rabbits, the squirrels, different things eat this. And I don't think that green sorrow is in the right place. Like I said, all this you see all the way down, all this is food. Very little plants that are growing in here are non-edible. The only things you really can't eat that's in here are my geraniums. That's all you, everything else is edible. So as far as brassicas and greens and, and maybe, you know, lemon verbena, you can eat all this. You can make tea from lemon verbena. Look how beautiful the dinosaur kale is. It's gorgeous. It loves the cold nights, loves the cool weather. So we don't have to go rushing out to grow anything. I've got broccolini growing here. And this is my old, old dinosaur kale. I leave this for the birds. They like using this one as a perch. I don't know how long it's going to last. It winds around back there and they sit on it and they chew the dickens out of it. It's become a habit for them. So I leave that. But then we still have some tomatoes and celery coming through here. And of course, we've got all the different tree collards. Some of them are green and some of them are the purple variety, which that one is. We talk about it every month. That one I had to tie to the fence because it's going over and I got to do a lot of cuttings off of it. Let's keep walking. I don't need to think about growing something for the winter because everything you see, including what's on the wall here, and I am collecting onions in there, baby walking onions, because I've got them, I can show you that. They're all over the place and I've been just trying to collect them. If I don't collect them, they die. See, this is brown already. Gonna lose that if I don't get down in the ground soon. So all this that you see, everything is edible. So it's not like I gotta come out here and grow anything. 
you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a nice yard here and I don't have to rush out. It's winter, it's fall. I've got to get my winter garden in because I've got my winter garden. I grow my winter garden all year, even in totes, even in totes, storage containers, pots. I'm growing my winter garden in the summer. I've got my walking onions growing all the time. I've got another, some more tree colored coming up here, cuttings. I'm growing it all the time. I don't have to think about it. Everything here grew all summer and is going to continue to grow all winter. So I don't have to come out here for me and Gary and replant things. So what I have to do now is clean up, make it organized, design it the way I want to get in here and do it easy because that's the way my life has got to be. I don't want to make things tough and I want to make sure that I can still walk through here and get into the back and a lot of places got overgrown. Look at this stuff coming up in buckets. I love buckets. Look at this. Beautiful hybrid collard coming up in buckets. Why is it hybrid? Look at the leaf. It hybridized I think with my dazzling blue kale. So that is perfectly good for eating. Now here I'm going through and I'm cleaning up my garden. I'm redoing my solar stakes because a lot of them, the old fashioned way, started to come down. It had baskets and stuff. So I'm changing that over and I'm going to keep all my solar fountains going. Solar fountains are my favorite. The mint on the ground is going to die back as we go into winter. All this spearmint that's growing through the back, that's all going to die back. And once it dies back, I can go through it reshape it again and as spring comes you see me do it. I start to pull it out because I don't want to be stepping on snakes. I have a gopher snake that lives in the front yard. He's perfectly fine because I know where he's living and that means he's going to keep out any rattlesnakes that may try to come in. So I like gopher snakes. They keep the mice down, they keep the rodents down and gopher snakes are very important to me. I haven't seen one in my garden that I can remember this year but that doesn't mean they're not here. I have to be careful because we live in the hills. Even though we're out of the city and we live in the hills, we still get rattlesnakes. But we have, thank goodness, not seen one at all this year. So that's a good thing. But I don't want to take any chances. I don't want to step on something, you know, in the mint and not know that there is one. So I keep that clear as best as I can in paths that I'm taking for the spring. So basically everything is going to stay the way it is. You know how I am on my tool, T-U-L-L-E. I'll try to remember to put the link underneath if you want to get tool. This plant was a cutting. It, this is, see, I think this is actually, this is a dazzling blue kale. See how beautiful and purple it is? I had to cover it. See that one? See this brown thing? I can step over here and show you. That's my other dazzling blue kale. You would not believe what killed this dazzling blue kale. I've talked about it. The goldfinches killed this. See how it goes in the ground? It's not completely dead. I think it's still alive, but I'll check it. It's planted. I stuck a little piece in the brick there. Let me see if I can show you. See? And it grew up and it was beautiful. And the goldfinches, we have hundreds of goldfinches, came in by the dozens. They sat up there and they chewed the dickens out of it. Well, of course, they didn't do anything to the trunk and the trunk is fine, but you cannot remove every leaf off a plant. And Eventually, they took off every leaf, which ended the plant's life. And now, well, now I have that, and I'm going to use that trunk with those branches for something else on another project that I will share with you. Another project I'm so excited. I've got all these projects I'm going to be doing as far as solar fountains, hummingbirds, and nothing really gets thrown away in the yard. It could look a little nicer. And I think this will look nicer because I have different ideas for this garden. So let's keep walking. I've got eggplant growing in here. This I'm going to plant something else. I'm going to take out the squash because the squash isn't going to grow this time of the year. I, it looks like I lost one of my tree collards back there. And I wonder if the birds did damage or something got to the roots. Now I haven't seen any gophers back there. See the tall one? That's not the biggest one. It was the second one back there. It's all brown, so I've got to get back there soon, clean that up, get it out. And I think this one actually will be going soon. This one's in the pot. Of course, it, it busted through. It's through the pot in the ground. But the one in the back that's in the ground, that one died back the other day I noticed it. See? 
still had leaves on it. So something affected it. I don't know what happened, but you know, it's a plant. They don't last that long, some of them. It should have lasted longer. Maybe, maybe this one overpowered it and strangled out the roots. I don't know, but I'll get through back there and I'll clean up what I want from it for a project I might use. But I'm trying to get you in there and the sun is coming through. I'll take the brown bits off and decide when I'm going to compost, what I'm going to use for projects, and then get it out. And even this one, see what's going on here? We've got birds that bring seeds up here and sit and eat. This is my original old tree collar, but look at all this. This is a perfect piece for a cutting. See how nice and straight it is? All those should be cut out and maybe replaced and eventually this plant replaced because it's well, it wasn't staked properly, and I have found that even the ones we're staking eventually want to lean because they just get too top-heavy. Gorgeous. Perfect for eat. Oh, my gosh. I'm making it a new way, and Gary's wild over it. Oh, my gosh. I'll have to show you how I do it. I make a flour. I dip it and fry it. I know fried's not good, but you know what? Got to indulge once in a while. Okay. We've got, I see... A little yellow papaya one in here. That's my strawberry papaya. I don't know what's happening with the middle plant. I don't know if it's done. I don't know if it froze because it really got cold last winter. Not worried about it. Whatever happens, happens. But the ones underneath are really taking off. And then see this? It's a bird stand that I put a dog crate on top. And the do birds can come in here and eat. It's kind of falling over. So I'm thinking of changing this whole area. And I've talked about that. We'll see how it goes in winter. We got to get through the holidays. But I don't even know what we're doing for the holidays. This is all growing really good. I've got garlic chives and Swiss chard. And not, yeah, this is the Swiss chard with the red vein. And then I've got this coming up. And I don't have any seeds for this. This is the purple uh, curly leaf kale. Well, I'm going to do cuttings on this all the way from the bottom. Start taking off a lot and get new plants growing because I don't have the seeds. That's really tall and I see a grasshopper up there and they do quite a bit of damage too. Yeah, and then the birds will come along and hopefully grab them. But anyway, so I've got a grasshopper up there, but I want to do some cuttings. I'm letting it do its thing. I'm starting to take cuttings off and I want to get that plant, it, get, get that plant going. And then... I'm not planning on really doing a lot of strawberries in these towers. Though they'll grow, you don't get a lot of strawberries. They really need more surface than that, I believe. So we're going to do a lot of changes. It's kind of an awkward spot here because I can't really do anything with, with well, I've got the original collard growing on the bottom. It's kind of dying back a lot. And then I've got areas I can't grow in because the moringa back there gets so bushy. It blocks out a lot of the afternoon sun and then you've got this. So I'm thinking of changing this around. If I change it, I'll get more. And like I said, I don't need more food, but ah, oh, San Marzano, look at this. This I want to do cuttings of. This I want to grow a lot of there. This is a tomato and the easy to slice and easy to use. And these are one of my favorites. So I want to get a lot of that growing around. Easy to grow. Easy to take cuttings. And they grow really true from seed, which is really nice. So like I said, I want to get this all changed up. Let's go through the gates. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice this. Look how big this papaya is. These are strawberry papayas. So I want to get things changed. And that's what we're doing. That's why I don't want to do a full garden tour. I don't want to spend 45 minutes to an hour telling you the same thing I told you two weeks ago. I want to tell you about the changes we're doing. So, we've, of course, the papayas, nothing's changing here. This is just our walkway. This is where we walk. This is where I dragged out the papayas in pots, left them in pots and grew. Going to leave this the way it is. I'll probably this spring really get out here and plant some stuff in these containers. They're sitting there. We throw the leaves from the papayas in there, water them, and then they feed the papaya plants. But I've got to get something planted. It's kind of ridiculous to leave it the way... Well, I have left it. The chairs. I have a lot of ideas with chairs. I'm going to have a new chair garden going in that's going to look different than that one. It's going to be more fun. The wall is pretty much, unless I change my mind and you know how I am, is going to be the same. I'm probably going to get more things going through here. I want to get some more con containers in there. Totes. 
if that eggplant doesn't do better than it's doing, it's going and I'll replace it with another eggplant. This will be all zucchini. I hope that I'm diligent enough to get zucchini growing in here because I don't use a lot of these little sweet dumpling squash. We really like our zucchini. And I do believe I've got more zucchini coming up here. So that's what's going on here and it's probably going to stay Oh yeah, there's a zucchini. Something nipped at it, but there's a zucchini back here. So I've got zucchini here. I've got tomatoes still growing here. And see, now I can start adding more leaves in here. See how the soil goes down? The plants are using so much of it that eventually the soil does go down. If it doesn't drain, I'll take some of that soil out and I will put it in another tote. It's going to be full of earthworms, microbes, everything we need. If it's draining really good, I might go where the drain holes are, dig a little bit of that out, move that out and put fresh leaves and stuff in there. And then of course I've got my moringas that I planted there and we'll see how that goes. So this is probably going to stay and Gary's fixing up the pond there. He said it's a project he'll work on little by little as he does his. And then my favorite, this is the, e anybody can set this up. This is the easiest garden that anybody can set up. Look at this. Don't mind my chair. I stuck it in the middle and put some lettuce in there. Now, truthfully, if I was desperate for food right now, I think I would have to move this. Why would I have to move my garden? Well, if I was depending on this garden, which is still growing, full of tomatoes, you can see it. There's hundreds of tomatoes through here. I would technically have to move this garden because That is where the sun goes. If you can barely see the sun through there, this is the big pepper tree. The sun goes across here and it doesn't get sun here until the afternoon. So it's losing sun. If you had something like this in your garden and you could get something to help you, you can lift those totes and you can move them. And where's the sun? This is where the sun is. Now I can't do this. I could. I could feasibly move the whole garden to the middle here, but this is Gary's driveway. This is where he drives through and takes his truck and he goes down the path to his garden. And if I block that, he's gonna run over my chairs. No, he's not gonna be happy about that. I could make him wind around it, but I'm not gonna bother with it. And if I wanted to, I could just put a few chairs here or just get these planted up good, which I'm planning on doing. So that's the only thing with me, is I can't move this strictly and only because it's in the path of where he drives and he does go up and down to his garden. So I'm gonna leave it and not worry about it because the sun right now, think about it, is gonna go down a little bit more. Come December, around the 22nd, we will be at sol solstice, I think they call it, and then as soon as that happens, the sun will start to go up again. So I will gain the sun, but probably not have my full sun until January or February. And in the meantime, everything's going to be a little bit dormant, but it's still going to grow. I probably will move some lettuce over here because the lettuce will like the sun because we're not hot anymore. Of course, we are going to be today. But as far as everything else, I'm going to leave it. And the lettuce, I'm just going to pull that out. We can walk over here. Look at all the tomatoes. We have so many tomatoes. Now they're not ripening as good, so I may have to pick some at some point and put them out in the sun, but they ripen real quick. Put them in the kitchen window, they're ripe. I'm full of peppers here, look at this. Peppers growing, look at all the peppers. This is hundreds and hundreds, probably more than that, of romaine lettuce. So I wanna get some of the romaine lettuce out. And this I analyzed the other day, really needs to be in a little bit warmer or a sunnier place. Even just a flower pot on a chair. I can't put it on the ground because the rabbits will eat it, but moved over there if I want to get some more lettuce going in the sun. So I'm probably going to do that soon. But as far as this, this is fine, just the way it is, and I'm going to leave it. So that's my chair garden. That's, you know what? Here's the truck bed. Let's go take a walk. We'll do a, a zip around. I'll tell you what else is going on because nothing else is being changed. We're not going to do anything. My tomatillos are ripening up quickly. Look how beautiful they are. And you know when they're ready because you give a little pull and when they're ready, they come right off 
And so you just see, like, here's some that's laying on the truck bed. I'm going to put those in my pocket. I actually unpeel these, take the little wrapper off, wash them, dry them, and put them in a plastic bag in the freezer. So I'm going to come back and collect more, and I just put that in my pocket. I have my pocket shirts. That's why I love my pocket shirts, to so just grab them and go. And this will probably go dormant. That's the pomegranate tree I planted there a little over a year ago. And look at the squash growing in the truck bed. That's what I'm saying. I'm growing a lot of squash I'm not using. These aren't bad, but I let them go too long, too long in here. Look at this. Got to go through and get all these. So I need to get some more squash off and then maybe freeze some of it. I still prefer zucchini because I can make all kinds of cakes out of it. I can make for a dinner, dessert, and everything. Well, that's what's going on here, and he is working through here. And he's planning on redoing all this, and he's taking his time with it. So you'll see a video on this, on how he's making all this. And you know what? Let's keep going. Here's his aloe vera. A few of you have asked me about the aloe vera. So that's the aloe veras that he grew here. And he's been watering them really good. And I found that if you water aloe vera plant really good, you get a lot of flowers. I'll come through here with the hose, because I'll be watering some of my pomegranate trees back there, and that tomato plant back there, even the geranium cuttings I put in there. And when I hit these with water, you know, water them really good, they immediately start to flower. So I have figured out, water them, and they grow really good. Now here, Gary got a lot of the aloe veras at my daughter's house. My friend that lives next door in the yard, it's, no, it's hard to get into all that, but it's like two houses on a property. He went, he said, to the dollar store and bought a piece of aloe vera, a little aloe vera plant. He planted it in the yard, and over the years, it covered the entire yard. It took off. So my daughter wanted it out when she was starting her garden last year and asked Gary if he wanted to come get him, but she didn't mean him all, he took them all. But it doesn't matter, believe you me, she can have as much as she wants any time. So he spotted the whole hillside here. But what happened was the gophers found it and started chewing up his aloe vera. So he ended up moving some of them on this side, and of course they're doing really good. See, that one's flowering too. And he ended up putting other plants in here, and you can see he's gonna discuss that, why he put in elephant food instead. and. So, so far, so good. We'll see what happens. This is his project. I didn't watch him do it, but I knew he was going to. Let's go down. And this is the aloe veras where he's been moving them. So apparently the gophers really do like aloe vera plants. They must eat the roots and the leaves and stuff. There's my garden up there. So this is the path in which Gary drives down. This is why I can't just go around and move my garden anywhere I want my chair garden because he wants to be able to drive here. This is very special to him. Because you can't drive the whole property, but this property you can. So you can just jump in his truck and drive down here. On top of that, when he was getting wood chips years ago, we haven't gotten wood chips in years, they could drive down here. They figured out, yeah, they can bring their big semis down here. It was amazing. So the skilled truck drivers could drive down here. Isn't this beautiful? This is like a little forest. Here's Gary's bees. Don't want to bug them, but they're there. That's the story you saw the video where he made that box, thought he was going to bring in an Amazon because we have hundreds of Amazons flying around here. Or an owl or something, put it up in the tree and within the week, the bees found it and moved in and he climbed up the pine palm tree in the middle of the night would not let me out there because he figured I'd be screaming and carried this beehive here and hung it here and he loves his bees. He was waiting and hoping they would go to the barbecue. They haven't done that yet. Let's take a look and see what's going on in there really quick. So they're all there. I think he told me they split off at one time and there were less. Technically he could build another you know bird box bird nest box, but then you can't get in there to get any honey in this. And don't tell him to try, because he probably would. Uh, he does have a bee box, a beehive box that somebody gave him that he's working on, but we'll see what happens when he decides. But the bees here on the property are to give them a home. So they've got all the flowers, see this is flowers here, and in the garden to come through and pollinate. So he wanted to have bees around for pollinating. 
And this is on the way to Gary's garden. You've been here with me. That's the back side of my garden. There's my moringa tree up there. There's the papayas. There's the pomegranate tree. See, that's, that's where the chair garden is back there. And that's where the gates are up there, where the birds are all hanging out. I see a dove back there. Let's see if we can see the dove. So that is my garden up there. And then Gary's got this down here. And this is where he dries. This is where he sifts. I'm going to get out of the sun. The sun is so bright right now. This is where he sifts his wood chips if you want some sifted wood chips. Stepping back so you can see. This is actually, I wish I had my camera, when we saw the bobcat. The bobcat came down out of the bushes here and just walked down and we were here and then it leaped into the bushes. And I haven't seen the bobcat in a long time, but this is where the bobcat are. And then of course you've got coyotes through here at night and different animals. So this is very natural and we love having it natural like that. We don't need to stop wildlife coming in. We want the wildlife. We have areas that the wildlife really can't get into. And then we have this for the wildlife that they can get into. And so he's got his work area and he's got, see where he can drive? That's what he absolutely loves. He just loves coming down here. He's got his own little thing. There's my garden, see? There's birds up there in my garden. That's the back side of the garden. I was growing back there. I think you remember, and I've got dragon fruit back there. But the point is, it takes so much more time for me to climb behind the garden, go down the path and take care of that. So right now all I have back there is fig trees. I've got the fig tree that tastes like strawberries and I have to cover it with tulle or the birds, they figured it out. They just demolish it. And I've got, like I said, some dragon fruit, but I did grow squash and basil and different things back there. But it was so much extra work to go down there. I had a hike down there and water back there. So I left it right now. Like Gary does have raspberries or blackberries growing here and different things. So, I mean, at some point we might do something, but we're just, we're not using everything. It's impossible to use everything when it's just the two of us. Down here is like a natural runoff from water if it rains. Notice when I said if it rains and it will run through here. And that's why we've got all these plants here because the water will run out of the hills just the way it's directed, come through here, and then you've got like, it's almost like a wash, but it's always dry because it really, we don't get a lot of rain, but we do have a lot of plants that over the years, they're drought tolerant. They can hang out down here. We've got a loquat tree and different things through here. So, and there's, I think there's some avocado trees down there. And then of course, this is what Gary planted here. He planted a lot of Brazilian pepper trees, and let me tell you something, he was sorry he did. He didn't think about it, I think it was about 10 years ago. We have a Brazilian pepper tree in the front, and then some of these other trees he's planted. See, there's my garden up there, and there's my dragon fruit. And that's where I come through, and go through there and do my garden. Here's, uh, is this, this is a Brazilian pepper tree he planted. He planted them to make a barrier, because he was planning on doing his garden. This was all open, bare, clay soil. Really, you can't grow in it the way it is. He tried, you couldn't. So he planned on doing a garden. So what he did was he designed it and started putting all these trees in. Well, he didn't realize the root system they've got. And it's not the trees he should have planted. And he didn't think about it. And he also plants planted trees down there. you got an olive tree down there. I think he's got something else wrapped down there. Oh, that's right. The guamachil that did not throw any guamachil this year. Here's this guamachil. And it skipped two years in a row. What a great tree. But I don't know why it skips. He doesn't know either. It must be weather conditions. So he kind of designed on how he wanted to do it. And he's kind of, as you can see, he made like a circle of trees because he was gonna keep the wind from coming up the canyon and stop that wind so he could grow more. Well, that was fine until he realized they have a massive root system. And what these trees do, along with any other trees you've got, certain ones, any of the pepper trees and pine trees, these trees behind me that you just saw, the Brazilian pepper trees, were sending roots in there. So he had to dig the roots out. Thank goodness that most of them are surface roots that really do a lot of damage. So he's analyzed it and figured out how to get rid of them. 
but he still wants to change a lot of these trees here because there's better trees he said he could put in here to do the same thing, cut the wind down. So you can see right now it's windy. But where I'm standing, because of the trees, see how the wind is blowing? See the trees in his garden back there? Things are blowing and the palm tree is blowing. Well, where I'm standing, I'm getting the wind because the trees are a windbreak. And that's what he wanted, but he didn't want it to steal from his garden. So he's gonna do changes. That's his thing, let him do what he's doing. I, that's what he's told me. And then he's gonna go really into more of these wicking beds. He loves his wicking beds. Oh, remember the apples? The deer came through and ate up all his apples. He's been bringing apples in. So once this tree gets really established, look at all the apples. Right there, he's got five or six apples sitting right there and then more over there and more here. Look at all the apples. So once he gets this situated better that he can get in here, he said he has to climb in there to get it. He's going to be really going gun ho with apples. I seen an apple tree at my granddaughter's school that's got hundreds and hundreds of apples. I would go there and get apples and well this year I didn't once they had the lockdown I wasn't allowed on the property anymore but they would allow me to go in there and pick all the apples I want because the kids don't eat it. So he's going to be redesigning and doing it different and we'll do a garden tour and he can explain if you want to know what his thoughts are. Right now We've got the holidays, you've got Thanksgiving and Christmas coming, and everybody's got their thoughts going on the holidays. We're thinking about what we're going to do. Like I said, we don't have to rush out and plant a winter garden, Gary nor me, and of course Gary's got more food than me, it looks like in here, because we've got the food growing. It's what we want to grow in the spring. Look at his papayas here. Look at that. So let's walk into Gary's garden for a minute. So what we're doing, is thinking about what we want to do after the holidays. I do want to close his gate because his gate is tight enough to keep rabbits out even though occasionally he finds one in here. Look at this. Now why would I have to plant a winter garden? We grow differently than a lot of other people do. A lot of people, they go and they plant a garden and come at the end of summer, they rip everything out and plant again. Well, we don't do that. We both, we're just, we're, we're, it's too exhausting for us to do that. We grow things that are going to continue to grow. Now, he's got his, this is the potato mint. He said it wasn't doing good, but I think his potato mint is doing great. I've got one in my yard that's it filled up an entire container. He said he wanted to put them in totes next time. This is in the ground but it looks just as good as mine. So I don't think it matters. Just needs water and the right conditions. And I found the right conditions. So hey, look at all this. So that's the thing is we don't need to go rush through and pull everything out. Why would we pull everything out? He's got regular collard growing. This is not even a tree collard. What, you're, what you see here is regular collard. He's got, look at this, the purple kale that I'm trying to grow up up in my garden, I wanna take cuttings. He's got it there. He's got his rhubarb growing. He's got Swiss chard growing. Comes up from seed on its own. I see he's got more type of collard. He's got all the purple tree collard back there. He's even got some squash. Okay, I know where I'm going. And these squash are being eaten. So these little ones that are being nipped on, and take the, even both of them. Wait a minute, I'm taking this now. Because they're being nipped on by something, I can cover these with tool, but these are perfect to, look at that. Okay, something's coming through here, but these are perfect to cut off and use now. I'm not even gonna leave them because I'll tell you I'm coming back and I'll forget. Cut that end off, grate it up, put it in something to eat, whether it's rice or eggs or something. And I may cover the other one with tool if I get back here, because something is coming through here and nipping on it, because there's probably not a lot of food for whatever's eating it. And they found that. But that's what I'm saying. We don't have to tear everything apart. Now we can add to it. I'm starting to grow more broccoli. I'm growing cabbage now. So that's what we do. We add to our gardens. We don't tear the garden apart. So he's got a whole field of beautiful purple tree colored. We will not have a shortage of purple tree colored. And if you're growing something special, and it's something it's hard to get because purple tree colored at times is really hard to get. This is regular tree colored. I don't want to step on his artichoke here, but see how green that is? You can see how purple those are. If you've got something that's really special, what's really good, and you can do cuttings, is 
take some cuttings and get more than one plant growing. You saw the one tree colored, plain green tree color that suddenly just died. Stuff like that can happen and sometimes you can't get cuttings off. They're not good enough and strong enough to plant, something happened to it and you can't get cuttings to grow. A lot of times you can. Oh, I walked through here last time when I was with you guys. I guess we're not walking through here today. This is sweet potato. But if, in case you can't, it would be really, really good to have more than one plant. Take it off your own plant if you've got something growing that you can do cuttings on. Let's walk this way. And then if you can get more than that growing, give some away. He's got tomatillos down there. Let's go this way. Give it away because I gave a lot to my daughter. So I know something happens. I even gave some to my friend. I know where to go if something happens to mine. If I lose my plant, I go back to them and say, hey, remember that plant I gave you? Yeah, well, I want some. <laughs> I lost it. So that's what you can do. You have kind of like putting money in the bank. In case of a problem, you can go back to whoever you gave some to and get another cutting and start over if you lost your plant. I lost my pepino this year. I don't think it's going to come back from the root. So I will be coming down here, probably now, and grabbing some pepino and getting some pepino growing. I'll probably ask him where I can cut it. He always says, take what you want, but you know, it's his garden. So I'll ask him to bring me up some cuttings and I'll start my own cuttings and maybe I'll wait till spring. Look at all this and then look at his okra. He didn't eat it all, but he's got seeds. So that's just kind of an insurance. If you've got something, get some cuttings going, get it growing really good in pots or in your garden and then give some of it to friends so you have some place to go back. Look at this, there's a term for that. It's not getting the chlorophyll it's supposed to and it's growing white. Just this one piece here. Yeah, cool. I know that's not a good thing, but it's still to me so pretty. Geraniums do that and they look so beautiful when they have a flash of color, red flowers, and they're growing these light leaves. You call them white, but they're basically yellow. Really cool. Anyway, so that's what's going on. We're more thinking about what we're going to do. And he's got a whole new setup because I went and bought something, found it for five bucks ordered three of these things that I'm going to do a video on pretty soon, probably right after the holidays. And he said, wait a minute, where'd you get that? And I told him I bought a few, get me 10. I've got an idea. Yeah, he's got an idea. So he's got 10 now and now I'm down to three for myself, but I'm, I don't need that many. I happen to like the storage containers. So they're my favorite. And I've talked about that. I might sit for a second. I love the storage containers and I think it's worth a moment to talk about. You can grow in the ground and if you've got the ability to grow in the ground like Gary did here, you absolutely grow in the ground. It's the easiest thing. But if you've got dogs, can you imagine if this wasn't fenced off and his dogs are running through here and lifting their leg and doing their thing and digging it up because they will go after gophers or things and dig and dig. It becomes really tough and people get discouraged. Well, with storage containers, totes. They're fantastic to me. And that's why Gary, who swore he would never... Oh, isn't that beautiful? I love the sound of these birds. He swore he would never grow in storage containers, and now he had me order him even more. It becomes its own environment for whatever plant you want to grow in there. That's what's so cool. Oh, he's got bananas. We're going to have to walk over there for a minute. You can grow in a storage container a zucchini that needs a lot of water. And then the next one, you can grow peppers that don't need a lot of water. You overwater them, you won't get peppers sometimes. They like to be a little bit dried out. You have the ability to treat each container in the way the plant needs to be treated. You wanna feed a plant, you wanna buy plant food and feed something, you don't have to feed the whole container. You don't have to set up a big grow box, a grow bed, raised bed. Oh, hello, am I out of hummingbird food? They come and let me know that their feeder is empty. The, that's a hummingbird. The thing is, you are going to treat each one individually. And that's what I love. You get a great big raised bed. You've got to buy all that material to put in there. Yes, you can load the bottom, you know, full of leaves and stuff. And then put your potting soil or wherever on the top. But in the meantime, you do have to set the whole bed up even if you're not going to plant in it because there's no way to set up half a bed, a quarter of a bed of a raised bed and only plant on one side. 
his pond's under here, believe it or not. Look at that. That's his pond, and he has all those dragonflies all summer. See, you treat each one individually, so you can be filling up a tote with leaves and stuff like now. Start taking off leaves and filling up a tote and making your own soil in one container, but you can still be growing something in another container, and you don't have to think about all the money to put out just to get the whole thing set up. That's why I just absolutely love it. I'm, the more I start working with it and the more I analyze it, I will never go back to anything else. And I'm not going to say who, but somebody I know went and bought multiple raised beds. The ones you buy on a stand, they were six feet across. Beautiful. I'm saying if they lost interest, they're done. I was talking to them the other day. They can't do it. And I said, what? Too much work. The potting soil was too much money. They're back to buying grocery food because it was too much work. I wish they would have asked me before because they would have maybe just grew one tote for now and then grow another one later. But they didn't and they set up these raised beds and it became too much work because, well, they were trying to grow all kinds of greens and tomatoes and peppers in one long six foot raised bed. I'll sit for a second. And... It's just so beautiful in here. I really do have to vlog in here. And the problem was the tomatoes were robbing the greens and the greens were drying out because the tomatoes were sucking the, the water and it was going all through the whole unit that the plants, each of the different plants, the roots will rob another one. And the plants that should have been on their own ended up sharing water, nutrients and everything with the other ones. It became too much and the plants started to die. So he ended up with a few and before you knew it, they were done. And that's, I think, what happens to a lot of people. They get discouraged. And that's what you don't want to be is discouraged. You want to be able to see success. So if you set up, let's say, four or five totes, and one of them died, but the other ones are growing, you still have that excitement of plants coming out of the one that's living. But if the whole thing is sucking from one another, it's like putting 20 people in an apartment. You know, and then they're all, well, this one, and one TV and 20 people in an apartment, you're all going to be fighting on who you are, or one computer. You're all going to be fighting over that computer. Well, it's the same thing with the plants. But if you gave those 20 people each their own bedroom and each their own computer, nobody's going to be fighting on what they're going to watch or what they're going to do. This is a way of thinking about it. Well, plants do the same thing. And that's why I like the containers, because each one is individual. Each one you're going to take care of. And if you lost something in one, it didn't work out, you go on and do it again and start over. And you only need a quarter of a bag of potting soil. So you could buy the best potting soil, spend $30, $40, $50 on organic potting soil, and you could spread it along the different containers as long as you fill the bottoms up with shredded paper or leaves or grass clippings and all that. Or you can fill up the whole thing with one or two bags of potting soil or get the cheapest. I get the cheapest. That's all I can afford. I'm not rich. I have no money. So I have to think of what we can afford. So I collect leaves. I fill up the thing almost to the top with branches and leaves and kitchen scraps. And then I only put a cheap soil on the top. I buy the cheapest, whatever's on sale, because I know that the microbes and everything are going to come in, do their thing, and I get the most beautiful food. Well, he's doing the same thing here. He's working with his wood chips. But then he's returning all these leaves back. And we do not use plant food. There's nothing wrong with plant food, but we don't need it. Obviously, he doesn't need it. We don't need it. So you do it whatever way is going to work for you. And I think if you are to the point where, let's say, you had something big, a raised bed or something, it's not working for you, try some storage containers. Start with one. I think you're going to end up being addicted and putting a whole bunch. And let me tell you something. I've got storage containers now that are over five years old and they're still going strong. The big secret with them to keep them going is keep soil in it and treat them like there's a plant in there all the time. The plastic will stay flexible. They won't split on you and they will last a lot longer than, let's say, a grow bag that will break down or a raised bed that is just too hard to take care of a six foot raised bed when you're only trying to grow a couple things sometimes. So it's, it's worth a try. But you know, the most important thing is you want to grow what works for you and what's going to make you happy and give you pleasure that you want to continue to grow because it's so important 
to get food now that has full of vitamins and nutrients than a lot of the food from the grocery store that has been treated in a way to extend its shelf life. Think about it. Extend the shelf life, which means all those enzymes that you need to eat to put in your body to break that food down that you get from the plant isn't there. It's not there. That's why these things can sit on the shelf for two weeks, three weeks, three months. You know, this is the reason. But you need those enzymes. It's not just the plant. The plant has these enzymes that break the plant down to return it back to the soil. But if it's not there and you eat it, you're going to lose some of those. I'm not going to say everything, but you're going to lose it. Because hopefully we still have the good gut bacteria in us to take care of it. I always say a little goes a long way. You want to grow a beautiful little pot with parsley in it? Add that to your food. And every little bit helps. So I think I've given you a spin around the garden. And you got to go down and see Gary's garden. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that pine tree. Though he hates it for the roots, I think it's absolutely magnificent. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And like I said, I wanted to make this a different garden tour because we didn't change anything yet. He's thinking about his changes and I'm thinking about mine. And we'll start doing that in the beginning of the year and also will depend on the weather. Obviously, he did not pick his cucumbers. Those, my friend, are cucumbers. But you know what? That is a happy cucumber. He can leave this thing hang, both of them, all winter long. Come spring, cut that up, slice it up, drop it on the ground. I'll probably grab one. Or what is that going to do? That's going to torpedo down into this container. And guess what he's going to end up with? Holy mackerel! More cucumbers! And just so you know, a lot of these yellow ones are still edible. If you bring it in, slice it, and it doesn't have that tinny taste, you can still eat it. But these are going to be fantastic seeds. And obviously the plant was happy, which means those seeds are even going to be happier here. So with that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Unreal. He really doesn't pick what's in this garden. I really do have to spend more time down here. Look at that. You can grow wheatgrass for the dogs too. They love it.